Well, uh, you obviously have realized that we have a lot going on in aquaculture in Maine, and it's difficult to cover it in a short period of time. Uh, we've, we've uh, much to the, the, the speaker's credits, we've actually retained a little bit of time for questions and answers. So thank you so much for that, um, and we will entertain any questions uh, from the audience. And if you don't have any, I'll make some up. A question for Mike. Where do you see the potential growth opportunities for Cook on the aquaculture side of your operations, particularly in Maine and the Gulf of Maine? Well, I think there's, you know, for us, obviously, uh, in Maine right now, we're currently uh, focused a lot on Atlantic Sam. And there's still room to uh, grow that industry in, in the state of Maine. Uh, to, uh, we, we like to follow, for biosecurity reasons and for just for growing, a fallow period in our, in our system. So we generally have three bays, so it takes three sites in order to run one crop, and, and you're rotating around so that you have some fallow times. So we need to add some more sites in order to maintain production, in order to increase production to, to uh, some extent. I think that the, the opportunities uh, some of the other speakers, uh, uh, Barry has certainly brought up, is obviously on the seed vegetable side, uh, on the filter feeders. There's also bottom uh, uh, ethnic ones like uh, sea cucumbers, uh, sea urchins, uh, blood worms. There's a lot of things out there that can be, be grown and be gr grown in Maine well. Uh, I think it's just uh, looking for the right people, the right opportunities, and, the, and the, the timing has to be correct as well. But I think uh, with a little more research, it certainly can expand, for sure. Yeah. People, uh, yeah, go ahead. Question for Barry. Um, is there a market for all that dogfish? Yeah. <laughs> and what are we having for lunch? <laughs> Yeah, well, the market's expanding. So we're, we have a, a very large Stalton Stall Kennedy grant that we're wrapping up this year. It's been a partnership for Gulf of Maine Research Institute. As, as you know, they've been doing the, the certification of Gulf of Maine caught species. And they've been doing an amazing job with local events with multiple high-end chefs and restaurants throughout New England this last year, uh, the last two years. Um, and then we're working with the Cape Cod Fishermen's Alliance, and they're looking at the large institutional buyers, um, the USDA type uh, you know, schools, prisons, et cetera, um, Sodexo, the large purveyors of, of fish in uh, the commercial, particularly universities. So we've had university events carrying dogfish throughout Maine uh, this last year. We've been pretty exciting at Bowdoin, Colby. Uh, we had one at, at Bigelow and number in Portland. So, uh, but the real opportunity is to change the regulatory structure. Right now, uh, the regulatory structure is fossilized so that they, the fishermen cannot get, um, you know, their allocations clearly need to be increased from where they're at right now. Um, the stock assessments that we've done have not penetrated the New England Fisheries Management Council. And so that's one of our top priorities is getting in to the council to convince them that the data we've published in Plus One, et cetera, the top journals, can be used by them not only to, to, to burnish, to uh, add to their stock assessments. Um, it's complex because they use bottom nets. They use trawls, uh, which has you know, thought that they were a ground fish species, and they're not. They're pr present throughout the whole water column. So they're not, you know, sort of using the gill net stock assessments that we're bringing in. So it's complex, but we, that's, that's the current status. But the markets in Europe are huge for this species. Any more questions? We've shut them down, boys. Okay, well, thank you. Oh, one, an announcement or a, an announcement? Okay. Let's uh, just give a quick thanks to the panelists.